everybody, it's Real Jade. Welcome, 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 welcome. It's episode 10. Episode 10? Would you believe it? We're already 10 episodes in. We're much higher in episode count than some shitty pilots that never made it on screen, so that's pretty impressive. Who, who would have thought in the 90s, we, us three, would be sitting on people's television screens, perhaps? Who knows? Um, presenting a lovely world of... Reviews from uh, yours truly, Jamie and Darren and Miss Derry up in the top left hand corner. Welcome! It's a great, great day to be here. It's a lovely Sunday. Um, we're broadcasting on Twitch. We're going to be up on YouTube during the week. We're on all the social networks down there at the bottom left. Compliments to Derry, the graphic designer up at the top left. Uh, this week, we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We're going to be getting everybody involved in the review in the middle of the screen where the art takes place that's normally live is now a pre-recorded version of what was once live but it is now in the past Boss. i will have to apologize i i think everybody was silenced except for me there for a moment um, <laughs> um but, that, but that's okay you, Darren, Darren complimented the movie a lot, and I fixed it. I fixed it now. But I um, the coherent response there. No, I did enjoy it. I thought it was very funny, and it brought me back to when I actually enjoy Kevin Smith's writing. Fucking brilliant, man. And just said, like, I wouldn't have thought I had a massive budget. Um, and I don't, think, I don't know if it did or not. I didn't go and check that. But it was just an enjoyable movie. You know, really enjoyable. Which means a lot nowadays. Well, I think it's like, it, to be honest with you, again, this is a movie that probably wouldn't have come out nowadays. It's um, very controversial in its themes yeah. and its characters and its protagonists. Yeah. Hey, well, we'll get into it because I picked out some of those as well. Derry, yeah. it was your choice this week. It was my choice. And I haven't seen any Kevin Smith movie in a very long time. But I'm just laughing because you said like, um, it's like a, 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 it's like Clark's on a big budget. But you say that like it's a bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, because it has honestly, its bad it, it, sides. Oh, it does. But if you're into Kevin Smith movies, it's a very Kevin Smith movie. Yes. Like one minute you're having this intellectual debate and the next minute you're fighting a poop monster. Yeah. You know, that's, it's very, that's, it's very that's where... intellectual versus slapstick and kind of mashed together. And, um, and I find that's where I kind of have some gripes about it. It feels okay. a little bit up its own hole. Oh, um, yeah. But again, sometimes. that's just Kevin Smith as well, you know? But like gratuitously so, like it's like sniffing your own farts sometimes. Right. And I'm like, you know, the things you're saying, they're not that smart, and it just feels like what in the '90s? Wow, that would have been mind blowing. Yeah, now like, like, like nah. yeah, for for the stuff that they're saying nowadays, it's not so controversial. It's not, and I didn't. No. I thought it was actually quite respectful of the treatment of religion or whatever. It um, was. I bet. Well, yeah. <laughs> I I was about to say they have a disclaimer at the start. Oh, they do. And that was very much, uh, I'd say, born from what Monty Python had to go through with Life of Brian. It felt massively like they took that lesson and went, oh, we're going to get ahead of this. Um, but even then, I thought it was, you know what? But, you know, I, I hear a lot of very, I say a lot of very disrespectful things about religion. So I'm kind of biased. <laughs> well, well, But I thought it aged very well because there's a lot of practical effects. There's not a lot. Of, and I thought like it stands up to a movie that would be made recently as far as the visuals go so uh, yeah yeah i think and again that's um you know uh, one credit to it that it didn't go down the route of using all these shitty cgis it did for the poop monster and i think it pulled it off good enough and then went straight into a physically effective kind of thing so they did a, a lot of good stuff and it again like you yeah. said it doesn't age badly because it hmm. doesn't actually have any um contemporary um yeah. reflection Straight there's nothing generic. mentioned about yeah like and that's a good thing i don't want to hear yeah. about the politics of the 90s at the time just yeah. tell me about the cool movie you're having and yeah, yeah, yeah. i feel like a lot of films lose me personally straight away when they start talking about like i i think i was talking to you last week about um that nicholas cage tv show and about swear words and i was like that just sounds like a fantastic idea. I watched the first 15 minutes of it and then it just became yes. American politics. I was like, thank you. Thank you for ruining this show. Yeah. I don't want it. I turned this on. 
because I wanted nothing to do with politics. And you shit all over it. So thanks yeah. very much, Nicolas Cage. You're ruined. You're ruined. So let's get into the movie. Um, so the movie begins. Oh, actually, I should start the sketch. I was just going to say, are you playing? <laughs> start the sketch. Everybody look at the top middle right there. Do, 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 do. So as we start the movie, actually, to be honest with you, it, um, it doesn't start off with a credit roll at all, which I'm highly disappointed about. Um, <laughs> no credit roll. Instead, it just starts off with a disclaimer, and I'm trying to get the disclaimer. disclaimer yeah, yeah. And I, I don't remember that. I like don't remember that at all. And when I saw it this time, I was like, oh, maybe I'd have to get a copy, a, a fake copy or something. What the fuck am I watching? And then I was reading, and then like without meaning to, I started reading it. He's like. God is a sense of humor. Just look at the platypus. And I started laughing. I was like, now, I actually went, so... oh, the poor platypus. And the next screen was, sorry for the platypus enthusiast. I was like, oh, that's okay. <laughs> they they oh, kind yeah. of stole that from uh, Monty Python. And it's not mm. from the life of Brian or any. They, that's from oh. the Holy Grail, where they were talking about the llamas. And then they went, uh, and like at the very start, there were like three llamas. Like they were given the credit roll, and you know, three yeah. llamas were stunt llamas, and they had to stop it. And they're sorry about the preceding, you know, the preceding credits. They were very silly. Those people have been fired, yeah. and then the music starts back up again. And then it's like four llamas and a trapeze llamas, and it's like stop it again. So that felt a lot like this. I feel like the need to do it felt like the backlash from Life of Brian, though, uh, and things like it wasn't uncommon at the time for these things to have these disclaimers think about michael jackson's thriller that had yeah. this is not part of the occult we have nothing to do with the occult and it was like oh that's so funny but i kind of feel like nowadays having these disclaimers would be a good thing for stupid people um because at least you could go you read the disclaimer at the start you knew it was a joke everything in this yeah, is a joke instead of going that's very disrespectful yeah, yeah. That's true, so, actually. They, they I make feel like they, when, they put the up, when they put the disclaimers up, he was allowed. To, he was allowed to say a lot more than he intended. Like the whole, the, the Catholic Church don't make mistakes. Okay, mistakes were made, <laughs> except for the Holocaust. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but that, I think that's just George Carlin. I think he he probably like I feel like they, he had a Robin Williams moment where they just let him say things, and they were just like, yeah, just be George Carlin. Just be George Carlin. Just, just um, there's another there's another great person that you know I think nowadays society would benefit a lot from. You know, he went on stage and basically what was it, the five swear words you're not allowed to say on television? And it was like cunt, pussy, at uh, like all of these horrible swear words, horrible swear words. And oh. um he got arrested afterwards. But it was like for the purpose of showing free speech is yeah. a big issue, even back yeah. in the seventies. Yeah. Um and now everybody can swear, but nobody can have an opinion. So I think George Carlin could sw swoop in and, and say that. Because there's no now, one like him now. We, we'll talk about this a lot. Well, I'll talk about this a lot. This film couldn't be made today because, number one, not enough people know about Christianity. And that's not a bad thing, but not a, pe not a people know about even Catholicism, really. Yeah. So it yeah. doesn't really resonate. Second thing is that it would offend too many people and it, you know that's just a big no-no apparently you couldn't make it a, a really a better religion anymore you'd probably need to kind of do a lot more sidestepping i'd find yeah yeah but like i i don't like i'll any it's gonna sound really bad any religion i've really ever learned of man is from tv and from movies and not from school like i'm just gonna be honest yeah like i'm able to talk about metatron and and like yeah, Isaiah, Isaiah, and all these guys like i've actually like seen you know in tv shows like supernatural and stuff talk about metatron i've learned a lot from that you know like i don't like if it was like if there was no comedy in this movie like i and it was just religious talk i'd have no clue what the fuck is going on like no clue what what's but going it, on. It's, it's not very it's a lot of it is made up um, oh yeah it is oh, yeah, yeah. christian christian mythology or catholic catholic mythology That's, it's yeah, not yeah. true to any mythos or anything yeah, was well, like... When I was when I was writing um that that play about God, it was a comedy play. Um, it's really hard to stick to things that people know about, and I think they stuck to it a lot in this enough yeah. 
for people not to get bored. Like you don't need to know a lot about the Catholic yeah. religion. Yeah. You just well, need to know it's oppressive. In, throwing in enough extras to kind of go, mm. oh, this is this is fake. Like, oh, also, ooh, controversial. <laughs> opinion: This one person, Simon Hayek, was saying is God. Did you ever doubt it? Chris Rock was saying he wasn't white; he was black. Like, um, like everyone had their own opinion. But this is like that's obviously where Kevin Smith hit the nail on the head in this because. Mm -hmm. Everyone does have an opinion. Everyone is like, I know a lot of people who do think God is a woman. Who you know, it's it's an entity. I don't personally. I'm not an atheist, but I do, I like to believe there's something up there, but I don't necessarily believe in God. You know, that kind well, of at way. the end, at the end, Chris Rock even says it. It's not he's not a woman or a man. It's just yeah. it's just God. So yeah, but, even at that, there's no gender for God. So I I do like they they broach it in a really um kind of subjective view yeah. you know they're they're not they're they're kind of fence sitters which is a good thing you know they they kind of give credence where it's due and then they take the piss out of it when it needs yeah, to be taken the piss exactly. out of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so getting straight into the film then we see a lovely opening of a beach scene on ashbury park new jersey new jersey a lot of irish people go there um ski ball i have no idea what the hell ski ball is but apparently it's a thing that <laughs> A particular it's... deity enjoys. We see an kind of a, 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 I would say, middle-aged man, looking pretty cool, like his tie, and he's just chilling out, hanging by the beach. And then these hockey players, which again, see this kind straight away, I think it feels like very Kevin Smithy. It's like, oh, yo, okay, we get, we're, we need demons. It's like, okay, they're like punk rocker kids with Hellboy t-shirts or whatever. Like they're just like outcasts. Um, so I thought that was cool. I like the way they are kind of hockey players. And then I thought, oh, if that was Ireland, they'd have Hurleys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've seen those guys before. They just have Hurleys in their hands. That's the only difference. Um, but yeah, so it's a nice intro to the film. Yeah, but I had forgot, as I said to you, like I hadn't seen this. I don't know about you lads, uh, you Derry. I hadn't seen this movie in... Like we're talking years now. Completely years. And like right up to the point where I saw... What's her name? Um, the main Beth one. I didn't even mention her name. Yeah, Bethany. Yeah. I, whatever her Beth name is. Until I seen her, I was like, am I watching the right fucking film? And I, just, <laughs> I was like, who the fuck is your old film? And then I saw the kids with the, the ski ball players. And I was like, oh, I can't remember. I can't remember bits and pieces. Um, no, they're not ski ball players. They're like hockey players. Street hockey. Uh, street hockey. Is that, is that not what ski ball is? Is that what is ski ball? <laughs> I, want to check I think it's like an arcade thing. Hang on, I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah, Darren, you'd research the the thing. Ski ball. Does anybody in the chat know what ski ball is? Yeah, it's that. Hang on, I'd have to is show you. Is it like throwing a ball in a net it's from afar? Yeah, you know. Oh, you know? right. Yeah. That's ski ball. <laughs> yes. Okay. So the guys are, are hockey players. They're street hockey players. Yeah, hockey. yeah, yeah. Hockey. Hockey. And that's the thing and... that goes back, I think, with the POSG universe between uh, Jay and Silent Bob, right? don't they? Is there a lot of Are references to like street hockey and stuff like that? I haven't had. I again, I haven't seen a lot of uh, Jay and Silent Bob. In fairness, like the only oh, wait, I've no, seen I'm is... in Wayne's World. Never mind. <laughs> yes, yeah, game on, game on, car. Wrong universe. Sorry. Wrong universe. That should be a crossover. Um, Jay and Silent Bob, and yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Wayne and Garth. No, it's so they, PG for that. Hey, they should, they could be a PG sixteen. Do, do they <laughs> well, yeah, uh, but then they, well, yeah, but Jason Mewes now was kind of got like even in the new movie, he, there's not a lot of there's not a lot of Jay in us. You know, he's he's like a guy playing Jay rather yeah, than yeah, yeah, like Jason Mewes. He's a dad now and everything, so you know. Mm -hmm. Like even when you see the behind the scenes stuff, he's talking like he was. I can't really say some of the stuff that he he wrote. He had to take pages out and stuff from Kevin. Smith. It was like I never thought I'd hear Jason Mewes say that. <laughs> he was trying to add pages in and clerks and clerks too. <laughs> yeah. Well, I can see why that is because I've seen Clerks as well, and that was fucking awesome. And even some of the stuff they, that he says in this, I'm like, whoa, that's pretty yeah. good. Yeah, but Clerks too is like. Did Harry, you know, I've seen Clerks too with the porch monkeys. Very yeah, I was like, holy yeah. shit. It's very, it's very fucking Hollywood and it's very like... Yeah, big budget. It's not as good. Yeah, but I, I maintain when Kevin Smith writes movies and he puts himself in, like you think Dogma, where they weren't the main characters. 
were the side characters. When he wrote that, sure, the James and Bob movies, when the car- the movies they wrote, he wrote that they were main characters in themselves when they were focused on themselves. They weren't as good as the movies that he made, like Chase and Amy and Mallrats, and like those movies are mm-hmm. fantastic because it wasn't about them because they're they're supposed to be side characters. Yeah, they really are because they are very yeah. they're very one dimensional in a lot of ways. But I like seeing them. They break up some of the stuff in it. They're amazing yeah. too. Um, so yeah, it wouldn't have been the same if it was just the two of those guys the whole entire time. It was nice having Chris Rock there, even though I don't know why he was there. He just came into it for no apparent reason, uh, which is fine. It's fine. It's Chris Rock, but <laughs> which I think is also a Kevin Smith thing. It's like, hey, I'm friends with this actor. Give him a part. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, very Hollywood. So they beat the shit out of the old man uh, with their hockey sticks. And we find out who that old man is a little bit later. Um, Anybody want to comment on the old man and the cool hidden mystery that comes along later, which I very enjoy? Are we giving it away? (laughs) Yeah, I think think we can give it away. It's God. It's God. (laughs) Everybody, okay? We've ruined it. It's God. This man is God. That's Alanis Morissette. She's aged badly. <laughs> um, but I love that setup. I love the way it's not referenced. They say like two things about it in the whole rest of the film. And until the end, you go, oh, shit. Perfect payoff. Yeah. So we go straight to that to Red Bank, New Jersey. And it's Catholic- Catholicism. Wow. It's like the... Um, George it's Carlin fun. is fantastic at this. Um, I think because Christ didn't come to earth to give us the willies. He didn't come <laughs> to spook us. Uh, so he, he, he basically points at the crappy old uh, crucifix that we've all seen. And then he goes, this is the old version of what the, the church is known for. But, you know, in the 20th century, 21st century, we want to appeal to the young people with Buddy Christ! Buddy Christ. I actually Look seen this image point. before I ever seen the film. Oh, and no I, way. I, you know yeah. what? It's surprisingly hard to find a decent resolution image online. Really? Yeah. Yes. That's why he's like, I think he's shoved up in the corner there, really small. Oh, yeah. I yeah. wanted him to be like the main image underneath my picture here, but I couldn't <laughs> find like a, a good res one. There you go. Buddy Christ. I love that. It's such a fucking good little thing like it doesn't need to make a lot of sense it's non-offensive like that's the best part of it like it's not trying to go out of its way to be offensive you can be offended by everything in this if you really wanted to kevin smith said about this character when he when he created they said as a joke obviously he said to ben affleck and ben affleck was like no no keep it in he was like oh no i can't keep it in Ben Affleck said, if there's anything that you're gonna or no kevin smith said to ben affleck if there's anything i'm gonna get killed for in this movie it's Given a, a Jesus Christ, this kind of a look. Yep, <laughs> and that's the worst part of it. Is. Which is, is strange because I think what would flip people's opinions on its head is actually Chris Rock saying, well, obviously, obviously Jesus is a black man. He's a black man. You know, if anything is going to like make you question what you've been told, yeah. it's not body Christ, it's that Jesus oh, is a black man. Is, I think more people is, would get offended by this, though, than what Chris Rock said, to be honest with you. Yeah, well, no, time. I don't mean I don't mean offended. I mean like, you know, it's it's pretty obvious Jesus was a black man if he existed. Like, so if anything no, was going to make Chris you Rock question, says, but Chris Rock says, oh, and then he had twelve white apostles. Like there was no white people there either. They were fucking Roman. Don't don't try and, you know, how did you try to do that, Chris Rock? I know what you're up to. And then he gives up his plot at the end. His character though funny and makes some hilarious statements and facial expressions is pointless. Like I feel like, cause at the end he basically goes, nah, I I want to, I want to be in the Bible. And then uh, Alan Rickman goes, we'll see. <laughs> that's it. So we'll, uh, we'll get to that part soon. After Buddy Christ is revealed, it's a nice slow progression on to revealing all the characters, which are kind of like, it gives a, yeah. like a little name. Right, so this is where the kind of, I guess the Bible references really break down straight away in the film. Uh, Loki, is he anything to do? No, no, he isn't. No. What? So 
that's kind of whatever. We'll we'll go in there. We'll get we'll go in. We'll be immersed. We don't really need. That's what I was saying. We don't really necessarily need to know anything about religion to even be invested in the film. You're like, oh, I've heard of I've heard about Loki before. He's he's a trickstery kind of guy, and that's all you really need to know about that kind of a. Oh, he's a god, and then we get back. Here here he's an angel of death. Now he's an angel of death for some reason. Um, and then Bartleby, which is like, that's not even, a, is this like a demon or like a lesser demon he, thing? In the movie, he's a watcher. Yeah. Uh, he's also completely made up type of character. Watchers, as far as I'm aware in the Bible, are like giant wheels within wheels with wings and fucking crazy shit jumping out of them. I, he's, it's not this dickhead. I hate fucking Ben Affleck. I really don't like him. Oh, I love right. Bartleby is like a believable biblical name. Yes, it is. It's it, you know, it's isn't it? Isn't that like a J.K. Rowling? Doesn't she have like one of her characters in that as well? Bartleby? I think so. I think so. No? Sounds like a wizardy I'm thing. I'm not. Even, it sounds like a wizardy thing. It sounds like a wizardy Could type be. of thing. So, at this point, we realize that Matt Damon's character Loki is basically. <laughs> Matt Damon. Someone had to do it. Someone I can't. had to do it. Every time. Matt Damon. Oh, I know what my choice is going to be. I, so, it's already on my list. Sorry. Oh, is it on your list? Yeah. So, uh, Matt Damon is straight, basically comparing the walrus and the carpenter from Alice in Wonderland to uh, religious doctrine and how... It's about basically the walrus and the carpenter being like a representation of Jesus and Asian gods leading the the stupid uh, oysters basically out of the river to eat them, um, and he, he's tr- trying to turn the nun away from uh, religion, and then he. Yes, <laughs> yeah, my dad. And then uh, Ben Affleck turns around and goes, "You you know God. You've literally met him and spoken to him." And you're trying to convince nuns that there is no God at all. He's like, yeah, I like fucking with the clergy. That's a great scene. Uh, I think that really sets the tone for the rest of the movie. Yeah, but the like... two boys in the movie, for me, like, they carry the movie. Even though I love Jane and Silent Bob, but the two boys, obviously, they should carry the movie being who they are. But their fucking acting through this whole movie is spectacular. Ben Affleck, in particular, for me. I'm not the biggest Ben Affleck fan in the world, but holy fuck, some of the scenes, like, you can tell why he went where he went. I'm just saying because I wouldn't be the biggest Ben Affleck fan, and I don't care about Batman and all that shit, but holy fuck, in this movie especially, he was brilliant. I, I would have liked to see two different people there, in my opinion. I Plus, really, Jamie. I don't know, they irked me. They irked me. Oh, God. <laughs> Anybody get that? They were just so themselves. They're so up themselves. It was just like, oh, I know. fucking shut it up. Works. And I think, I think it works because of Ben Affleck and Matt Damon. <laughs> In a Kevin Smith movie. Yeah, yeah like Matt. they are meant to be. Well, Ben Affleck is. Matt Damon isn't. He's not normally in stuff by Kevin Smith, is he? he is, yeah. ben, ben Affleck is in Jane Silent Bob. Oh, yeah. He's in Clerks. No, isn't ben, he? Ben, no, he's not yeah, in Clerks. Ben Affleck, yeah, Matt Damon has been in three of his movies. Um, but he's only been in it because of... Matt Damon ben or Affleck. Ben Affleck? No, Ben Affleck's been in a okay. lot. Four of his movies are five movies, but Matt Damon is only coming in because of Ben Affleck. But he's becoming like he's just become part of the crew now. So, yeah, I don't like him. So, I don't buy it. <laughs> Ben Affleck shares an idea. He says, "Hey, I found out that a church in New Jersey are." having some weird Catholicism thing that allows you to pass through the arches of the church and suddenly be redeemed for all your sins. Oh. So the idea is that these two guys have went against God's wishes. So you find out a little bit later, uh, Loki threw down the flaming sword that he used to smite all the heathens in the land for God. He was like God's hitman. Um, and he was like, no, I'm not doing this anymore. He was convinced by Ben Affleck's character because Ben Affleck's character felt sorry for humans. And that's why they want to get back to heaven because they're kind of regretting it now at this stage. Uh, Yeah, it seems a little bit. Yeah, 
Fine, that's okay. <laughs> right? Okay. Sounds a bit hokey, but <laughs> sure. It, it, I just... Again, it seems a little bit up their own arse. Like, like I was, oh, I was philosophically outraged by what I was doing. Like they do go on about the whole thing over and over again. Don't you find? No, I like the way. I like. Think why Alan are they? Why? Right. The here's place. a few questions that I have. I would have liked to see him as, um, like, living in the middle of nowhere, like out in the woods, or you know, living in a cave. Like it's been literally since the beginning I of think time. The joke is that they were banished to Wisconsin. Wisconsin didn't exist at the time. It's Pangea. <laughs> I don't know. Like that. That's probably the joke. Is that like Wisconsin is so shitty that they really need to get away from it? I don't know. <laughs> Blow me down, down, guys! Here with your yes. interpretation. Yeah. Oh, you come back. No, come back. Sorry, I had to get my keys. Because I'm leaving this conversation. Goodbye. Uh, no. Um, what I'm saying is that. Yeah, it, that's what. So this is why it starts to feel like one of those stage production films. Um, if you get me, because it's all based in the same little place, like a little Wisconsin, like, oh no, it's very American centric as well. Mm. Again, you know, America didn't, didn't exist at the beginning of time. America. America. But it does at the time of the movie. It does at the time of the movie. That's all. That's the end of that, man. <laughs> so, What? Sorry, you've lost me on your point of like it's very American. That's a, it's an American movie. Yeah, and no, but I'm saying like why I would have liked to see um, a little bit more background to the characters. What they've just been hanging around and they live in the the same apartment with each other. Yeah, well, I think that's that the students of it. I think well, I think that's I think, I think Kevin like it's been kind of explained, isn't it? They got banished to Wisconsin and they live in this shitty fucking place. I think it's like I think if you explain too much about it, it would be as funny that's my two cents so they go to the next part and he asks him to read the article and then he sees that it's again this uh catholicism thing to allow people to come in through the arch of the church to be suddenly forgiven for their sins the rededication of saint michael's church this is the guy from clerks mm -hmm. Uh, Brian Hannan. Yeah. And he has the same Hallinan. character name almost. He's Hicks as well. In Clark's, he's Dante yeah. Hicks. I think here yeah. he's. Dante Hicks. Hicks. He's Grant Hicks. Grant Hicks. Grant Hicks. Grant Hicks. Yes. Sorry, yeah, yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Uh, so he's trying to introduce basically the church, and we go a little bit ahead to where. Ben Affleck agrees and goes, okay, fine, fine. They, yeah, they they basically have to turn back into mortals again, rip off their wings. So they have to travel from here all the way to New Jersey. And that's the kind of their side plot. Um, but in the middle, uh, Matt Damon wants to go ahead and murder uh, this boardroom full of... Mubi. Mubi. Mubi executives. And Mubi being like one of those... Uh, it's it's clearly like McDonald's or a Coca-Cola thing uh, or Disney, and they have an image of a calf, like a golden calf. Well, you see Clerks too. Yeah. Yeah, movie. Yeah, movie. Yeah, movie. Movies. Well. This, this, be, be this is Kevin Smith's. Um, yeah, this is. He said if he ever opened um, a fast food chain restaurant, this would be his. He wants to have the next like McDonald's or, but he wants to call it movies because it was started out in one of his films, and he wants to make it as a. Restaurant. Wouldn't that be funny if he became the owner and thus the evil conglomerate that he actually killed oh. in this film? <laughs> oh, the irony, Kevin. Uh, so he, he wants to go off and kill uh, these guys for no apparent reason. We go to the church. This is where we find out about the guy being in a coma, which, again, if you haven't been paying attention, is the guy at the start, who is also Alanis Morissette and his god. Uh, they yeah. sneak it in really nicely here. Um, they do in a little kind of a school. The cinematography in this film isn't uh, really that great, to be honest with you. I don't like the direction. It's fairly straightforward, and that's what I'm thinking. Like it was all directed by Kevin Smith, and yeah. it's all a little bit um, like kind of a Clerks kind of a thing, you know? 
very simple, that's, very straightforward. There's not a whole lot of complication to it. No, but that's, that's his style. I don't think he's... He's not that complicated of a guy, I don't think. Like, when it comes to me... Cause you well, that see, makes sense. Yeah, but no, that's not even abuse to Kevin Smith. That's just mean. That's just his style. It was for me. Like, yeah, a lot of the first shots in it are just patterns across the screen. Like. But it's all <clears> the film. The whole entire film is pretty much all of that. I think they have one or two very, oh, cool shot. But other than that, it's very straightforward. Like dolly shots running across or, I don't know, maybe long shots. A lot of long shots, but not a lot of inventive shots, you know, yeah, coming in or, or anything like that. The music. Did anybody find out the music as well? Like the music was pretty substandard i felt music music was kind of basic like some of the background music it was pretty much yeah. the same loop over and over and over again i didn't even read i didn't listen to any of it the first time it stood out to me was the credits because obviously alanis morissette oh yeah but like you know there, there was a few songs in the film but the whole background songs or the back you know the the action scene background track is like a crappy loop over and over again until they yeah. go Okay, we better fade it out towards the end. Like the, the bar scene with the gore, Goraloth or whatever, the big shit demon. So did he it was just the same loop the over and over again. He spent all the budget on the shit demon. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and they did a good job, in fairness. So they now did. we get an introduction yeah. to Bethany. And again, this is kind of like that um, show and not tell. You know, okay, she's clearly just uh, one of those lip service Catholics. And she's just going there out of habit she's not really there out of any sort of a longing for god or religion um so we also find out that she is also working at an abortion clinic with her friend who is jewish who clearly doesn't give a shit about any of these people um first love gene garofalo yeah i love the way she comes in and she's just like walks over and he's like hey is that the pope there we go uh so she comes in they have a bit of a chat um it's pretty much explaining the character is like oh i'm a doubting catholic and the other one is like i i don't care i'm jewish you know we killed your savior so it's not uh, the characters were all they're all really basic there was no really depth to a lot like don't get me wrong i still love the movie i'm not i'm not bragging on it but like the characters are all basic they were all very just but like bethany is so is like she speaks like this pretty much all the time and um yeah. you know it's it's okay and it's like wow i'm excited like again not a bad actor but the whole film the direction is just like nah. you know i wish there was like more ah if you get me there's no descriptive word i can give for that yeah in the direction <laughs> not eh. but like again i think there was so much to it. Like, it's a two-hour two hour film. Kevin Smith had a shitload to deal with. It's just, I feel, it's pretty much the start of his big career as a as a cinematographer, director, you know, that kind of an idea. Um, yeah. But there was a lot of places where I was thinking, ooh, could have done that a lot better. Uh, mainly with Bethany talking, because she just kind of talks like this all the time. <laughs> It's really quiet. It's not a bad actress. She's just a shit actress. No, it's, it's not that she would she, just speak up, love. Speak up. I can't hear you. <laughs> I actually heard... I, I heard Tennant had that problem as well. I heard um, Rob Pattinson in Tennant. Wasn't he really hard to hear? I haven't seen I this did, film. I haven't seen the movie either. I, yeah. I, I heard it was really bad sound mixing in it. Yeah. We no, then get an introduction to Jason Lee. And... Oh, Jason Lee. Remember Jason Lee, guys? Yeah, I remember Jason Lee. His name was uh, Earl, wasn't it? Yeah, but Hollywood won't work with him anymore. He just, he's like... It's because he's a big he's Scientologist. Just, he's his worst fucking... His own enemy. He's his own worst enemy. And he just... You know when people have, like, verbal diarrhea, but, like, stuff they say can get Fuck them yeah. into this fucking yeah. trouble. Like, he hasn't made a movie in God knows how long. And obviously he's a Scientologist. But, like, I'm at the final loads, but... I didn't know Jason Lee was a skater. I didn't know he was like could skate, but I didn't know this. Like I watched loads of videos from last night. He's actually a proper like he's fucking amazing. He's like has to be in X Games and everything. Like I know this has nothing to do with the movie, but just little trivia I found out with Jason Lee. But like one of my favorite shows is My Name Is Earl, and he's fucking brilliant. And I had forgot he was in this movie, Derry. And when I saw him pop up, I was like, oh my god, yes, fucking brilliant. He's a little horse. 
for such a small cast, I always like I keep on forgetting. Oh yeah, they were in it. Or like, uh, what, what's her name? The inspiration, serendipity. Salma Hayek. Oh. Selma Hayek. I didn't even know who the hell Selma Hayek was until I seen her name at the end of the credits. So I was like, oh, oh, that's Selma Hayek. I've seen her all over the place. Best entrance to a scene ever. It's pretty ever. good. It's pretty good. You wouldn't get that nowadays. You wouldn't get one of those entries. Uh, so we get the introduction that Jason Lee is a demon of some sort. Ooh. He is Azrael. And he basically takes over this poor lady's house. Uh, he wants a house with air conditioning because nothing is more evil than indoor air conditioning for some reason. We don't have that in Ireland. We don't do that. <laughs> We're we just cold. Air We're just cold. Um, so they decide to make the house the base of operations. And then we go to Bethany's room where she's asleep. And it's not that bad. But then... Alan Rickman comes along as Metatron, the voice of God. This obviously scares Bethany, and she tries to put it out with a fire extinguisher. Yes, I'm with a fire extinguisher. Do you have to use the whole can? <laughs> uh, so he, uh, she basically doesn't want any intruders at that time of night. And who would? But it was Alan Rickman all along. That's okay. Alan Rickman's a nice guy. Uh, she swings out a baseball bat, and... He turns it into a fish, which I think is, what are you going to do? Hit me with that fish. <laughs> like, ah! I love that. I thought there's a lot of cool little, like little, you know, little gags like that, that are pretty good. Um, where they go into the, the little cafe and they're yeah. drinking tequila. It's like, we're, are we Mexico? No, we're just down the road. Uh, but I just, I love that. I have a question about that scene. Yes. Does she have pants on? No, she has pajamas on. No, oh, she yeah. didn't have pajama ends when he came in. She just had a night shirt on her, like a t-shirt. And he just went, let's go to the Mexican bar. Like, well, in fairness, he, he doesn't have anything at all. So <laughs> he got nothing down there. He's just a, a a Ken doll. I like that. Took their penises away. And that's funny because they don't mention why. Uh, you remember that whole Bible thing where angels started getting it off with... with people you know there's a few there's a few cool like a few funny religious gags in it that you don't necessarily need yeah. to mention I think, I think that's really good it's a really like it's a kevin smith joke all over don't yeah i don't get out i couldn't rape you if i didn't want to do. he just pulled down the pants and just i was like that's as an adult now that's fucking disturbing it is <laughs> it's, it's pretty so disgusting i'm like i would it sounds a little bit gay. I would much rather see him with a penis than what I just saw. <laughs> that does sound a bit gay. Yeah. And all the yeah. better for it, Darren. It's, if it Rickman, means giving that know, man a penis. Kevin Smith, I don't think Alan Rickman was ever in any of his other movies. But like, what a fucking... I know he had Ben Affleck and some of his friends had Ben Affleck, but I mean, fucking Alan Rickman is, was a phenomenal actor. He's a fucking he world-class actor. But he actor, wasn't but, working for that long. I mean, I think it wasn't Die Hard his debut. Yeah, yeah. He wasn't that big at that time. I think like he no. started he started going way bigger. Like he was pretty much a twenty first century big time actor. Yeah, um, but during the nineties, yeah. it was pretty pretty unknown. Yeah, I don't think it was really until Harry Potter that he blew up, was it? Uh, yes, actually, he was. Mm. Th that made him huge. Mm. Being Snape and that, yeah. So I always kind of uh, I think this was the first film I've ever seen him in. This movie, Which is pretty, yeah. I think Alan Rickman was fairly. He was fairly. I don't think. Like I don't think he was just after Harry I Potter. I, I think I he might has have the seen presence of an actor that's been around that's had a long career. Yeah. I, I think that, yes. Oh, I, I, I was really surprised when I found out that Die Hard was his debut because he does have that. Like you think he's been around a long time and been in a lot of mm -hmm. things. Do you know what actors nowadays, a lot of actors, see, it's funny the way the COVID thing is, the pandemic has happened, because a lot of movie actors now have had to turn to TV because they know TV's the way it's going. But Alan Rickman was a, a stage actor who became a movie actor, but he actually did TV as well as movies. Like, on a regular basis, he did TV shows, guest spots and stuff. So he was like, like, the movie, the first movie I remember seeing him, I think it was Die Hard, it was the first movie I've ever seen him in. But, like, that fucking voice alone, that's... Just he's so distinctive. 
He's like a fucking mm-hmm. Morgan Freeman, so distinctive. But he's like I would have thought that he was fairly well known when he was in Dogma. Well, uh, even at that, I think at the time, to be honest with you, most actors from Britain all came from the stage, like Patrick Stewart, Brian Blessed. They were all they all started off as stage actors, and uh, again, it just shows you how much of a benefit that people that started off in the stage have, even when it comes to comedy roles. Like, all of those great stage actors are fantastic comedians, every single one of them, because they know how to gauge that that audience. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, so Alan Rickman comes in and basically shows off his Kendall doll appendages. It's... Uh, then shows off the wings. Derry, what did you think of the wings? Can't hear you, Derry. <laughs> sorry my dog is being annoying um yeah no love the wings again practical effects really mm-hmm. stood up to i mean how long are we now 20 years on 22 years or whatever stood up to being on screen now and that's yes you know without question why can't they do more things like that that like that's what i'm saying yeah. like that's like that's... i have no problem with digital effects to a certain extent but it ages the movie and i think if you want your movie to stand the test of time you've got to go with practical as much as possible and i think that's why something like dogma stands up now is because things like the wings they didn't just go oh we'll just throw a stick on his side and cgi in the rest you know what i mean you can see that they're they're manual there's somebody pulling up those wings you know Mm -hmm. so i thought they were they're fantastic even the way they mm-hmm. come out and yeah. like every like you can you can you know they're kind of mechanical, but they, it just looks fantastic. Um, and where they use CGI, it was kind of like I understand where they used it, you know, far away shots or whatever. Mm. So yeah, yeah, they get acquainted with each other, and he invites her to drink some tequila, and then decides that she's going on a holy crusade because God said so. Now, normally that would drive people a little bit insane, but you know she's kind of depressed and you find out that she's had like a disease in her womb that she can't have children and also she's divorced so like might as well kill yourself at that stage right ouch ouch Ouch. so uh he advises that they're going to she's going to go away and find two prophets um and that's later on we find out jane's on above I like the way they introduce themselves as well. It's like they'll announce themselves Smoochie as prophets. Smoochie Smoochie. There's a stupid part in this where afterwards you she's coming, she's leaving the abortion clinic, and the mat outside of the woman's house that they Azriel broke into is now it's a, the, the abortion clinic. The welcome mat. Yes. It's the same welcome mat. And that's to signal, haha, these little demon guys are around. But I thought, did they carry that yeah. there? Why did they bring that there? I, I miss that now. Yeah. I thought, I, I, you know what I would have liked instead? Is to see their hockey sticks up against, uh, like as she's coming out, hockey sticks up against yeah. the pillar. And then as she walks, like they zoom past and pick up the hockey sticks. Yeah. That would have been cool. The mat was a bit crap. <laughs> yeah I, it, it didn't register with me at all or if it, even if it was maybe upside down it's like ooh satanic no they just <laughs> put a welcome mat there yeah ooh. I don't, maybe it was like supposed to be a portal or something they do show later on that they do travel in portals so I give them that but why take the mat at all yeah because they don't have to do it later on they just cut through no. the fabric of tent with their hockey sticks oh they darn ambusher. walk Hey, where are we going, Darren? You're also muted. I can't hear you. Sorry, no, I just put the I put the, the baby to bed there. I <laughs> just have to. Uh, by sorry. the way, you're, the baby's not in your arms. It's us. We're in your arms, Darren. Oh, no. Don't put oh, us shit. to bed. It's, it's you. Yeah, I know. If you put us there, give us a kiss and then walk out of the room. We're like, Darren, no! <laughs> We're not the baby! 